last month I had dental surgery and I'm very lucky I didn't have major complications, but I was in pain and I was in pain for more than seven days. And um, among the uh, post-operative instructions was a prescription for hydrocodone. That's a generic Vicodin. That is an opioid painkiller. Um, I was given instructions to take that as needed for pain, um, and and I followed the doctor's instructions. I was aware that it was a serious painkiller. I knew I could not drive on it. I took it seriously. I kept records every single time I took a pill. Um, I reduced the dose as soon as I could tolerate it and switched to ibuprofen, but that wasn't right away. And I am so glad I had those pills and was able to function, and I'm lucky that I work from home, but I was able to get some stuff done and not be in pain all day. I was able to sleep at night. And this idea that if you want more than a week of pain pills, that you're some type of risk for abuse or a, a, a future addict is absolutely naive. And it's completely contrary to the data and science that we have. What happened to the party of science? Right, exactly. My husband is a medical provider. I showed him this idea. I showed him this tweet of uh, Gillibrand last night. He said it's a horrible horrible idea. I mean, he's worked in orthopedic surgery before and he said, listen, there are pain, there are patients who have chronic pain to the point that, you know, the medical community deems it suicidal pain. If they didn't have access to painkillers, even with all the side effects of painkillers, their lives would be absolutely destroyed. And if they are low income people who can't afford to take a time off of their work or, you know, can't afford to pay for a ride because like you said, you're not supposed to drive on this. This can real, this could really, really uh, hurt them, this kind of policy where they would have to go back for an unnecessary doctor visit every single week just because Kirsten Gillibrand thinks they should. Exactly. And, and that's one of the things that I put in my article was the fact that I had access to the doctor's office. I had a phone number during a regular office hours, a 24-hour answering service. I had all the medical care and support that I needed. What I did not need was to be forced to go back across town when I was in the middle of my recovery. And and again, beyond the anecdotal evidence, um, which you know the senator could have found in her own Twitter feed in response to this, but we have science on this, and the studies show that the risk of opioid abuse is very similar to the risk of drug abuse that you would expect. The people who are already having pri uh, previous addiction problems, the people who are already in unstable situations, for the vast, vast majority of patients who are under the care and supervision of a doctor, an opioid prescription is not going to put them at risk. In fact, there was a study done just last year that showed that for um, post-surgical patients treating acute pain with opioid addiction, or with, with an opioid prescription, rather, um, the risk of misuse was uh, 1%. 1%. So, you know, you're, you're going to be interfering in the doctor-patient relationship. The, doc, the, the Democrats have been preaching, my body, my choice, don't get in the way of a doctor and a woman making a medical decision about abortion. And this is something that affects a lot more people and is a lot more serious. And we have across the board bipartisan research from private groups, nonprofit groups, government agencies, all showing that this is not the root cause of opioid addiction.